Hi, welcome to another Shop Talk. I'm Brando Skyhorse, and today I'm talking with internationally published best-selling novelist Amity Gage, whose latest work, Schroeder, is available in paperback and was shortlisted for the Folio Prize. Uh, Amity, good to hear, have you here. Nice to be with you. Thank, Thank you. you. So I know in your Coursera module, you're going to be talking a bit about setting and description. Mm -hmm. And I think those are really interesting words that perhaps a lot of writers, aspiring writers, are familiar with, but maybe they're not quite familiar on what they mean because they're so big and the concepts are so all-encompassing. What is setting? What do we mean when we talk about description? It's, it's a great question. I'm going to define setting as just the place and time in which a story occurs. And description is the material and the words devoted to fleshing out that time and place. And I find description to be a much, much broader term, right? So description is a foundation, I think, of every aspect of a story. So say plot, for example, um, it's a description of events, you know, and character is a description of made up people. So I feel like description is really foundational. So um, setting is you know, sort of a description of time and place. So <laughs> I know that a lot of my students are faced with the maxim, show, don't tell. Okay. And what people, I think, mean when they say this, they mean put it in a scene. Mm -hmm. And so in my Coursera module, I talk about a checklist that writers can check off for what belongs in the scene. So there's dialogue, there's specific intimate details, there's what I call the three R's, react, reflect, reveal, all these sort of basic components that help a person visualize what a writer sees in their head. Mm -hmm. So where does, see, where does setting and description fit into that template of creating a scene for the reader. Right. So what I say to my learners is um, trying to tell a good short story is like trying to convey a dream. You oh, know, that's and it's yeah. you know, and as private and as weird and random as dreams can be, when you try to tell that to your to someone who's listening to you, it's so hard, right? It's so hard for them to see it because they're not in your head, right? You right. know, and also there's other problems like dreams are half remembered, and it's kind of similar when you're writing a short story or a novel, any work of fiction, it's really in your head as deep as a dream is. So it's so much effort and so much work on scene work to really transfer that dream from your head to the readers. And then that's what show, don't tell means to me. Sure. It's can you write in scenes all of the, all the atmosphere and the logic and the, the sensory detail in your scene and can you deliver that to someone else? Because if you can't, they can't really have the pleasure of reading. You know, they don't really get to enter your dream with you. You know, so scenes do that best, right? Because what you're, exactly as you describe them, they're these moment by moment, play by play, recreations of interactions or events. And um, you have to do them as, as, as carefully and as, as, as thoughtfully of the reader as you can. Like, what does the reader need to know? Because that reader wasn't dreaming with me. Yeah. So uh, that's what that means. Well, I mean, that makes sense too, in terms of thinking about the most potent details about dreams are those sort of like tiny little physical descriptions. Yeah. I know I was speaking with uh, another one of the Coursera instructors. Yeah. Anthony Dorr talks about how a lot of people want to write about big ideas, yeah. love, loss, heartbreak, etc. Yeah. but they don't ground their stories in the physical world. Right. And so getting those details, so you can write about heartbreak right. or you can write about somebody that has a cherished valentine yeah. in a desk drawer somewhere that they haven't looked at for 20 years. Right. And because of that physical detail, you're just able to connect more specifically with the large ideas as opposed to, I want to write a story about somebody who broke my heart yeah. because that usually results in a pretty I bad know, story. And, <laughs> <laughs> well, and you and you think that's going to be in some ways all you need is the sentiment and the feeling and the passion. You do need that. But really to have your dream or your story understood, you really need the physical details. Sure. And you know, as Flannery O'Connor said, um, she said, you know, writing fiction is she called it an incarnational art, you know. It's oh, that's interesting. it was just everything was physical. Everything yes, and she said yes. if you don't want to get dusty don't write fiction because we're made of dust, right, you know? Exactly. And um, I love her kind of grouchy way of putting that. Yeah, I mean, grouchy writers are fun, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. So not to switch gears to grouchy writers, I know Eudora Welty, 
Uh, I've never met her or never had any sort of read her biographies. <laughs> but uh, I was thinking a lot about this conversation and I tracked down this Eudora Welty quote mm-hmm. here, which I wanted to read to you because I just think it's so interesting. Every story would be another story and unrecognizable if you took up its characters and plot and made it happen somewhere else. Fiction depends for its life on place. Place is the crossroads of circumstance, the proving ground of what happened, who's here, who's coming. How does setting inform our understanding of those questions of what happened, who's here, and who's coming? It's a wonderful quote. Um, I feel like when you're writing a scene and you're placing your character in a physical scene, Mm -hmm. you know, um, Brando walked into the room and what and he saw the bookshelves and he heard the traffic and he felt the sun these are these are ways that you're describing the scene mm. and later on as brando continues and he goes through his series of events that are the plot of the story those details that you place in the scene that you initially placed in the scene in the service of convincingness right. just to set it and to make that dream feel real become those very details that start to matter um, sometimes when we talk about symbols, I think all we're talking about, a writer, I think, doesn't think of them as symbols. Yeah. A writer thinks of them as details that he or she put into the scene, sort of as a matter of fact, um, to, to color and paint the scene, and then they start to behave, and they start to repeat, you know, um, in a different answer to that question, you know, there's the Chekhov quote about, in terms of plays, don't put a a gun on the scene, on the stage, unless it's going to go off at some point during the play. That happens when you set your scene and you put the books in the room or you put the traffic in, in the sounds in the room. They come back later on the scene. They start to mean. Yeah. Or they start to have narrative function, too. Like, oh, and then Brando walked outside and, you know, waited for the bus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that w- that's a story I'm well acquainted with. Well acquainted with. So I think that they are, I don't think that setting is remotely ornamental. It's integral to the scene. You start to describe it, and then it starts to behave, and it starts to become inextricable from the other things that happen in the story. So I'm thinking in terms of how important details are to description in particular. I know that a lot of people watching this might ask both of us legitimately, where do they come from? Where do details come from? Do the, is it come from the powers of observation? Do, should we keep a notebook? Where do you get your details from for your work? One thing I love about being a writer is my active participation with my imagination, which feels, which is technically infinite, right? I can imagine anything, and I can imagine great quantities of things. So generally, whenever there is a deficit of detail, I know that it's the writer or the learner being um, not waiting until not exploring that imagination. Oh, I see. Sure. Because I think that everybody has those details in his or her imagination. Because it is the most one of the most powerful things we have as a human being and what other kind of animals don't have. Right. You know, so if you take the time and it's what I call imaginative research and I talk about it in my module is that um, you need to sit in some ways you kind of meditate on the scene. You can close your eyes or you can keep them open. You can even write it down. And you're just actually without even, um, w- without writing your story, you're um, imagining the world. You're just walking through it, you know, projecting your way into this world. And the details will be there because your imagination is one of the most incredible things about you. Yeah, I love the idea of imaginative research, basically visualizing what's in your mind's eye and getting all of the details down pat, seeing the room, seeing the traffic as you've described, seeing everything laid out and trying to record it as faithfully and as diligently as you can uh, on in your story. Can you, uh, with the remaining time that we have, can you give us the best advice that anyone has given you about setting or description, be it uh, a writing mentor or uh, someone in your family? I know that in my conversation with Salvatore Shabona, he said that the first piece of advice that he got as a writer was from his grandmother. I think he was working on a novel when he was like six or seven years old, and she said, well, it needs more dialogue, which is a very punchy, <laughs> effective way, I think. So do you have something similar uh, that you can leave, uh, leave us with here? I think there's a wonderful quote from Elizabeth Bowen, and that is, nothing happens nowhere. Um, You may think before you get to this course, you know, when I think of, um, I've got to set my story in a really exotic place, um, which you could do, you know. Um, But really, you already have a setting as soon as you have a story. And um, that could be a room. That could be a bedroom. 
that could, there are many kinds of rooms, right? And they're all so different. The difference between a bedroom and a kitchen is large, you know? And so, um, you, oh, the woods is a setting, an elevator is a setting, and nothing happens nowhere. So just become aware of it. If you're aware of it and you're generous with your description, you give it to the reader, then it will be a fascinating one. It doesn't have to be exotic. If you have a setting, you have a story. Perfectly put. Amity Gage, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.